book of Romans. <laughs> and uh, today we are going to start a series that I've been waiting on starting for like ever. And it is a series that um, will now show you how you are equipped to get manifestations. I know you've wondered for a long time, how come this hadn't happened? How come this thing hadn't broken through? Is it God? Is it me? Is it the devil? And it is time to answer the question. I know you also have wondered that if I am like Jesus Christ, then why am I not doing the things that I read about that Jesus has done? And uh, can you really see the sick healed at your hands? Can you really raise the dead at your hands? Can you really cast out demons at your hands? And over the next several weeks, we are going to enter into the school of the supernatural. And I am going to begin to instruct you. I know you see yourself as ordinary people. But the first thing I've got to get you to do is to change how you see yourself. Amen. Take the teachings on grace. It has prepared us for this time. It is something that through unmerited favor, unmerited favor, God has favored us with something called authority. It is nothing that we deserve. It is nothing that we have earned. It is something that through his love and his grace, he has given to every born again believer authority. And so today I'm going to begin to teach on a very, very controversial series. <laughs> Big deal. Controversy means, you know, probably truth. Amen. If you tell, uh, uh, if you if you say to a woman she's overweight, that's going to be controversy. <laughs> it's going to be extremely controversy in your house. It's going to be very controversial. So, so just because something is controversy doesn't mean that something's wrong with it. Most of the time, truth is controversy. And so, Father, I thank you for what you will do by your Spirit, with every individual, with every church, that by your Spirit. You will begin now to raise up authority and power in these last days so that men and women will begin to understand that they don't have to put up with anything from the devil, not for one split second. And we give you praise for that now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Would you give the Lord a big hand clap of praise? He is worthy of it. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 will begin there this morning and I want to talk to you about the authority of the believer. The authority of the believer. Now to have authority is just the right to command. It is, it is, a, it is a grace given, God given right to command. A right to command things. Now, I, I want you to understand what I am teaching you is not reverting back to religion or self-effort. It is something that has been, that we've been graced with. You didn't do anything to earn the right to lay hands on the sick and see them healed. You hadn't done anything to, to deserve to have the authority to cast out demons. It was through his love, his favor, and his grace that he's given you this authority the right to command. Now Romans 5 and 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned or ruled by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Now, another translation says that we shall reign as kings in life. And there are several places in the New Testament that refers to us as kings. And Jesus was referred to as being the king of kings. So I've got to let you know that we can reign as kings through the gift of righteousness and through the abundance of grace. Now think about the authority of a king. What is the authority of a king that is seated on the throne? His words. His words. He will speak and it'll be done as the king has decreed it. Amen. Amen. So if we have been uh, described as being kings through righteousness and through the grace of God, 
our decree is now going to be extremely vital if we're going to be a, a, a king. Now, I turn to your neighbor, and I want you to say this to your neighbor. Prepare yourself to make decrees. Are you ready? That simply means you're going to call it, and what you call it, that's what it's going to be. And a king does not sit on his throne second-guessing himself, wondering if it's going to happen the way he said. All right, listen to me. All right, Matthew chapter 10 and 1. Now, I'm telling you this is going to be radical. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be radical. It is going to cause every bone in your religious mindset. That's what I'm trying to kill, your religious mindset. It's going to cause it to tremble. But I am not believing God for just a regular religious church. I'm believing God for a supernatural church. All right, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness, and to heal all manner of disease. Now look at this in the Amplified. Notice he said, he gave them power, that word is authority. He gave them power or authority to, 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 to cast out unclean spirits. Now, now people talking about, wait a minute, what y'all talking about, demons? Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 you mean to tell me that's real? See, you, you let Hollywood deceive you into thinking that demons do all this other stuff, and the only thing they do is influence what you do. And you have the power to cast unclean spirits out. The Amplified says, and Jesus summoned to him his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of disease and to cure all kinds of weaknesses and all kinds of infirmities. Now, let's talk in a place where you understand. The electric companies of this country have the responsibility of making sure that they provide for you power. They provide the power. They are responsible for the power supply that comes to your house. Do we agree on that? Now, when you walk in a dark room in your house, you don't call the power company, the electric company, to come and to hit your switch to turn the light on, do you? That's not their job, right? Their job is to supply the power. If the power has been supplied and you're in a dark room, the only reason why you're in a dark room is because you haven't flipped the switch. So the electric company is responsible for supplying the power and then each home and the people in that house have the responsibility of making use of the power. Mm. You see, God is the one who has supplied the power. But he's not going to come down off his throne and flip the switch. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, flip the switch. Oh, I hope y'all hearing me. Since he has supplied the power, it is my responsibility to, to make use of the power. See, God has supplied every, everything we'll ever need, everything that we'll ever need for godliness and this life. He's already supplied the power. It's already been given to us. That power has been given to us. We have that power right now in earthen vessels. But it is our job to make use of the power. And I don't know how many times we're coming and we are confronting issues in our life and the power has been given to us, but we won't make use of it. 
we won't make use of it. Now, not only did he supply the power, but if you go to Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8, there is a command to use it. He not only supplies it, but he now commands you to use it. Oh, my goodness. Now, look at this. Uh, verse 7 says, and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons, freely without pay you have received, that's grace, freely without change or charge you give. Now it doesn't sound to me like he was making a request. Sounds to me like he says, I gave you power, Matthew chapter 10 and 1, I want you now to use the power. I command you now to use the power. My job is to supply it. Your job is to put it to use. My job is to supply it. Your job is to put it to use. And look what he said. I'm reading out of Amplified verse 8. Cure the sick. I'm going to say something. I'll prove it later. He didn't tell you to pray for the sick. He, he said, go, he said, cure them. So it sounds to me like we got the power, but now we need to use it. See, you see now why you had to understand grace? Because if you didn't understand grace, every time you get ready to use the power, you're going to question yourself and ask, am I worthy? Am I good enough? Do I have to be perfect? You remember, you're using the power in him. So your imperfect self in Christ makes you your perfect self and not going to use the power. Turn your neighbor and say, use the power. Turn the other side and say, flip the switch. See, we are living in a generation, there's a millennium generation here that ain't going to sit here another 20 years and listen to us talk and listen to us preach and watch us have church. For now is the time for us to rise up and begin to demonstrate the power of God. And you ain't got to do much talking when they see the sick healed, when they see the dead raised, and when they see blinded eyes open. Do the hat and everybody gonna want to be saved. Everybody in the house get Everybody, everybody. I don't forgot the end of the song, so I ain't gonna pretend like I remember what it was. I don't know what they were doing in the house, but I'm, I know what we're gonna be doing in this house. Everybody in the house gonna be getting healed. Everybody, everybody. Everybody in the house gonna be flipping the switch. Everybody, everybody. Everybody in the house gonna be raising the dead. Everybody, everybody. Everybody in the house gonna be casting out demons. Everybody, everybody. This is not meant just for the preacher and half of them ain't doing it. This is meant for every man and woman who believes in the finished works of Jesus Christ. I've been commanded to use the power. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. See, I believe that the number one reason for unanswered prayer is that people are asking God to do something that he has given us the power and authority to do for ourselves. And asking God to do things he told us to do isn't going to bring answers to our prayers. See, we really don't understand the authority that God has given us. The average Christian approaches God as if they have no power or authority at all. There are two prayers that if you pray them, they will never be answered. <laughs> Number one, when you pray to God to do something that he's already done, he'll never answer that prayer. It's already done. And number two, when you ask God to do something that he's already told you to do, but you hadn't done it, it's not going to be answered. Those are two things that he's put into your hands. 
Luke chapter 10, 19 makes it very clear what he did. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means what hurt you. Now watch this in the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible says this, uh, and, and I, he says, behold, I, I have given, I have given. He's not giving, he has already given. The day you got saved, it has been given, past tense. If it was given, that means you got it. Behold, I have given you authority, the right to command. And I've given you the ability to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over the power or the ability of the enemy and, 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 and the possessions. And he says, and nothing shall in any way harm you while you're doing it. Get your mind off Hollywood. That's not what this is. He is saying for every ability that Satan has, you have authority over all of his ability. So that means when he comes, and, and his abilities are limited to what he can say and suggest. What he can say and suggest. One of the major things I've come to recognize is that the enemy uh, has been very effective in getting a lot of church folks to not even believe that he exists. A lot of folks not come to church, they don't believe in no devil. Of course, they bring in the church with them every Sunday, but they don't believe in no devil. Come on. You know, when you feel like, man, I'm going to cuss this person out, that's influence from the spirit. You feel like, they just ticked me off. That's influence from, from, that, from that demonic spirit. Its job is to try to rob you of what God's given you to do and to, to steal a word out of you and to destroy your life just by making decisions. And the worst platform you can give the devil is strife. Because where there is envy, envy and strife, there is every evil work. So you have been given authority. Say out loud, I have authority. I have ability over all the power of the enemy. So there is nothing that the enemy can do that you don't have authority and power over it. So either you sit there and tolerate what he does or you execute your dominion and authority. So now, like I said, most Christians are starting from a position of powerlessness. You know, most Christians say things like, Lord, we're nothing. We can't do nothing. We just waiting on you. So stretch your hands out, Lord. You know, we treat God like an errand boy. Father, go to the hospital and heal them. Come on, haven't y'all seen this before? Everything is all right. I'm gonna tell God to do it. Go do it, Lord. You go. Hey, I can't do nothing. You, you approach every situation powerless. You don't approach your situations as people who understand your authority. You approach it powerless. You see lack and you, uh, you, 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 you approach it powerless. You, you see trouble in your marriage, you approach it powerless. You, 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 you see sickness on your body and you approach it powerless. You get ready to die. And the whole time, Heavenly Electric Company has supplied the power. And you won't flip the switch. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, didn't tell us to do that. It's completely contrary to what it told us to do. Matthew chapter 8 says, heal the sick. Raise the dead. That freaks church folks out. Can't nobody but Jesus raise the dead. I don't know where y'all been. There have been a whole lot of people other than Jesus that have raised the dead. Uh, 
don't know, Pastor. Been with you for two years now. Look like you finna, mm mm. Cause you know we ain't nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. See, we have bought that powerless philosophy. And we've been carrying ourselves powerless. And we're concerned about what's getting ready to happen in the world. And oh, Lord, Jesus, like you ain't got no authority. Hallelujah. Matthew 8 says, heal the sick. Raise the dead. Why would Jesus say that if it wasn't possible? Well, you know, only Jesus could walk on the water. I mean, we ain't nobody. See, you ain't reading your Bible right. Jesus wasn't the only one to walk on the water. Peter walked on the water. Somebody said, yeah, but he sunk. Yeah, but before he sunk, he walked. You ain't got that far. <laughs> so it lets me know that it's possible to do it. Just because you haven't done it or just because you ain't seen nobody do it doesn't mean it cannot be done. Don't limit God by comparing yourself with everybody else. Just because everybody else, because they didn't do it and they couldn't make it happen. Who is they anyway? I, I, I want to look at Jesus and I'm not going to limit God. I want to look at him because with him, all things are possible. And I don't know how many people today at the sound of my voice that may be experiencing some impossible situation. Doctor told you it's not possible. Bank told you it's not possible. Your pocketbook and bank account said it's not possible. Your emotions tell you it's not possible. And I am here today to tell you there is nothing that you are looking at that is impossible because you have a God who can overcome all impossible. And he has turned the power on in your life waiting on you to flip the switch and you ain't gonna never know if what I'm preaching is true until you can get to the point to say I believe that this power is here and I'm gonna flip the switch I guarantee you when you get a death sentence you'll start believing stuff you won't believe right now but why we got to go there? Why we got to go to the place to get a death sentence? How come we just can't believe God and just step out on some stuff and say, Lord, if you said this is possible, then praise God, I, I'm going to do it. If you told me to heal the sick and, and somebody, some, you, you, all you got to go to them and say, hey, look here. Auntie, what did they say you had? They, asked, they said, I'm gonna, I got cancer, I'm going to die. I said, I got something for you. <laughs> yeah, baby, I know all you go to Ke Kekalo Church, them, and I know they've been talking about all that. But I, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna die. I'm saying, well, you know what? If you, if you, if you change your mind and if you think you can believe it, let me know. I got some for you. Also, one night that pain started hitting auntie. And baby, come here. I'm believing. I'm believing you. And you go there now. And she said, you gonna pray for me? And you, you gonna tell her, no, I don't need to pray for you. I have authority. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that cancer on the inside of you, and I command it to go in Jesus' name. And then going back to your bedroom. Now see what I just demonstrated? Your religious philosophy is looking and saying, that can't happen. He didn't tell us to pray and ask him to do it. He didn't tell us to pray and ask him to do it for us. He told us to do these things. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast and drive out demons. Now, I do know, and I must, must make sure you understand, we aren't doing it on our own. We're not doing it by ourselves. It's because of God's power. It's because of God's power working the miracle. But we are responsible for taking the action. It's God's power that works the miracle, but we supply the action. He supplies the power, we put it to use. He does the miracle, we supply the action. Mm. Look at John 15 and 5. He is responsible for the power. We are responsible for putting it to use. 
He is responsible for the power. We are responsible for putting it to use. And I'm not talking about just when you come to church. The greatest miracles you'll ever see will be outside somewhere. It might be at that barbecue you're going to this afternoon. The greatest miracle, see that's why you got to know who you are. You can't afraid, you can't be afraid to be who you are in Jesus Christ. A lot of stuff don't happen in church while we're sitting here, but while you're living life. Now look at verse 5. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Without me, you can do what? See, you can't heal a fly without Jesus. Huh? You can't do nothing without Jesus. That's the first thing. you See, you can't get into some arrogance like it's you. You know it's him on the inside of you supplying the power. Even, even turning your light switch on and off. That, that, that ain't you. That's because the electric company supplied the power. You put it to use. Let that bill not get paid. And watch what happens when you go in there and turn that thing on and off. Are y'all getting what I'm saying here? Now look at Hebrews chapter 13 and 5. So I know I can't do nothing on my own. On my own, I can't heal nothing. But watch this. But I'm never on my own. Uh, I said I'm never on my own. I'm never on my own. Oh, but Brother Dollar, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm on my own. I don't care what you feel like. Don't go by your feelings. Jesus' word is greater than your feelings. His word said, here's what his word says. His word said in verse 5, let your conversations be without covetousness and be content with all such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Look at the amplifier of that last part there. I will never leave thee, nor forsake you. He was pretty strong on the fact that he was never going to leave you. Now here, here's what he said. He said, for God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, watch this, nor forsake, nor let you down. I will not relax my hold on you, assuredly not. So you can't do anything without him. You can't do anything by yourself, but you're never going to be by yourself. This is his commitment. Once you're born again, he is going to be with you. He ain't never going to leave you. Now, if you want to go to the club and get drunk, Jesus is going with you. If you want to sneak around the Motel 6, if they still got one, and commit adultery, Jesus is going to be right there with you. I'm going to tell you right now, I know that sounds religiously strange because religion has taught you that time you do something wrong, then God, it grieves the Holy Spirit and he going to leave you. Now, he will never leave you because in the midst of all of your mess, it's going to be him talking you and counseling you out of that pit, placing your feet on a solid ground, showing you that you can live a better way. <laughs> we already have God's power in us to use it. We don't have to ask him to heal the sick or to cast out demons. What kind of power do we have in us? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. What kind of power do I have in me? You have power in you. Power literally is defined as the ability to get results. You and I have on the inside of us the ability to get results. See, that's why I'm calling this the school of the supernatural. Because you're, 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 you're about to do things you didn't think you were ever going to do. At your hands, you're going to begin to walk in the, in the miraculous. At your hands, you're going to begin to see things done. And you're going to be saying, I ain't even no preacher. Well, really, you are. Anytime you go and tell anybody about Jesus, what you do, he, 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 he talking to you. He talk, when he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, that's where everybody he was talking to. Look at verse 19. 
And what is the exceeding greatness of, of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? And verse 20 says, which he wrought in Christ, and we're in Christ, right? When he raised him from the dead and sat him at his right own right hand in the heavenly places. So we have on the inside of us raising from the dead power. Wow. We have on the inside of us raising from the dead power. That freaks you out if you've never done it, if you've never attempted to do anything like that. I want to tell you a story that happened to me in 1980-something. I'm not sure what it was. To show you how that power is always there, even when you don't know it's there. It's always there. I was uh, with my pastor, Pastor C.L. Carter, and um, I was at his house that day. It was downstairs, and he came and got me. He's about two, two, three o'clock in the morning. He said, son, we got to go. I said, okay. Got dressed. We got in the car. I said, what's up? He said, well, I just got a call from a lady, and she needs us to come over and pray for, for her son. And I thought, wow, what an unusual hour to come and pray for somebody. You know, I'm thinking... Being young in the ministry, can't that wait till tomorrow or Sunday? <laughs> and, and more than that, can't somebody, anybody in their house can pray? Um, I didn't have any idea he was holding stuff back on me at the time for a good reason. So we got there and we walked in the house and there was this hospital bed in the house. And, and, and uh, I'll never forget it, Rublin was his name. And he laid there in that bed and uh, I... I walked in, everybody was sad. There was an, an old uncle in the, in the corner, it looked like he was about drunk. My mama was kind of sad. And, and I got there, and, and then he said, son, uh, uh, do whatever God tell you to do. Now, I, I, um, I'm still trying to figure out what's the deal. So I laid my hands on, on him, and I, and I prayed, a, I was led to pray a strange prayer. But I wasn't praying, I was just talking. I wasn't led to pray, but I was led to declare and speak. And I said, in the name of Jesus, the anointing that I carry, I release into this, this man, his body right now in Jesus' name. Now get up! And I tell you, I forgot a part, when I laid hands on him, he was cold. See, I don't know what's going on. Why he's so cold? Y'all need to turn the heat up. This man is freezing. <laughs> and then he reached up with the stuff he had in his nose and mouth, pulled all that out. And he's just, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm thinking, boy, he's really grateful. <laughs> By the time he raised up, his mother fell back into my pastor's hands, and he looked at her, you want to get saved? <laughs> she said, yeah. While she was getting saved, the uncle in the corner, he, he got up, I, I, I want to be saved too. <laughs> and I'm thinking, boy, I tell you, revival's breaking out in this house. I said, I'm glad we came and, and did this. Got in the car, and I said, boy, that, they were really grateful for us coming. I said, boy, I'm, I'm really learning, you know, that you... Just can't wait on Sunday with everything. And he said, well, let me go ahead and tell you the whole fullness of the call. He said, now, we got a call. Uh, 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 Reuben was dead. I said, I didn't tell you everything because I didn't want you to think into it. I want you to overthink it. Yeah, the wisdom of a leader. I'm telling you, we possess that power. Same thing happened again. I was in Sac Sacramento, California some years back, and we was with Phil Godot, and there was a woman that died on their steps. I had just finished ministering, in fact, on the anointing. And uh, I went in, I was extremely tired, we'd been there for a few days, and sat down, and Phil said, man, I need you to come and, and, and pray for this woman. I, I said, Phil, you can't pray for her? <laughs> he said, come on, come on, quit, just, 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 come on, just, just say stuff, just. <laughs> so 
So, you know, I didn't think about something. She had lost her, uh, you know. Yeah, she lost the inside. Yeah, that's a good way to say that. She she lost herself, and and um, I didn't know it. I just, like, feel something smells, man. What's going on around here? And he said, well, here she is. And I was wondering, why is she laying on the steps like that? So I reached down, and I laid my hands on her, and I said, I release this anointing in me and you right now. Get up! And she coughed and got up. And I said, it seemed to me y'all could have did that. And I went back, <laughs> sat in the room, and then Phil came in there. And I said, Phil, why you didn't pray for that lady? He said, well, let me tell you the rest of the story. She was dead. God, <laughs> dog it again. <laughs> so I finally figured out, I can raise you from the dead if you just don't tell me you're dead. <laughs> I know that works, but I don't have to operate in the ignorance of it's not working because now I know that through the blood of Jesus and through his grace, he has graced me to operate in that authority and in that dominion. And I'm telling you, it is you who carry this power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of you and I, if you'll use it. Now, I had a situation where a spiritual son of mine died in Alabama, and they, they, I, he had been dead two, three days, and, and I figured, you know, you might as well stay sharp. And I went in there, and, and I, funeral home, I said, where's his body? They said, well, he's getting ready for the funeral. I said, could you wheel it on out here and give me a private room? I want to pray. And uh, got in there, and, and they had him in there, and I had one of my sons with me, and he was scared. He was just like, what are you doing? And... Uh, so they pulled the body out, and uh, I looked at the body. Now, let me show you something. There are two extremes here. Here's the other extreme. I looked at the body. I'm considering he's dead. I'm considering he's been dead for three days. I figure I got a chance Jesus was dead for three days. And then here's what I did. I started praying, and I asked God to raise him up. Oh, in the name of Jesus Raise him up, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Come on, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Let me tell you what happened. Nothing. I looked up. I said, well, I guess he didn't want to get up. Let's go. The issue wasn't that he didn't want to get up. The issue was I am now asking God to do something that he has equipped me to do. Brother Hagen, Brother Kenneth E. Hagen, who was the founder of the Rhema Bible Institute in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, his son Kenneth Jr. is running it now, tells the story of when he was having a vision where God was speaking to him and telling some very important things. He said all of a sudden, a demon got between he and God and he just started making all this noise. And Brother Hagin said, you know, I wonder why God don't tell that demon to get out. And, and after a, a while, he became so irritated, he just out of frustration said, in the name of Jesus, be gone. And immediately the demon left. Then God spoke to him and he said, uh, you're wondering why I didn't do that. He said, because that's not my responsibility. It's yours. Ah, he said, Kenneth, I gave you the authority and I can't take it back. Because Psalm Psalms 89 says that this, this covenant that I have made with you, turn to Psalms 89. I want you to see that this is important. Psalms 89. Verse 34. Verse 34 says this, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once God has released dominion and authority into our hands, he cannot alter it. He will not alter it. My covenant will I not break, nor alter it. You see, go to Hebrews 1 3 right quick. Let's might as well go on with it. Hebrews 1 and 3 talks about 
everything is held together by the word of his power. If God were to change his words or go against his word, he's not like a man. A man will tell you something and then break it the next hour. God can't do it because the entire world is held together through his word. Hebrews 1 and 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. So the power is his word. God's power is his word. <clears throat> Can you get that? And if we made in his image, our power is his word. He says, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty. Now, it isn't an option for God to tell us to do something and then go back on his word and do it for us. He doesn't have the option. He tells us to do something, then we got to do it. He can't, regardless of how he loves you so much, he hates to see you go through the stuff you go through. But he has no option. He cannot go back on his word and do something for you that you have been authorized to do. That explains a whole lot of reasons why you hadn't seen no change in your life. You see, God wants us well. God wants us healed. How many of you believe that? But he will not violate his word to heal you. He wants you healed. He does not want you to die of this sickness or disease. But he will not violate his word to heal you. Why? Because the authority to heal has been given to you. Boy, that's shocking. Your religion is just doing blasting all kinds of things now, right? God told us to resist the devil. And if we don't do it for whatever reason we don't do it, he's not going to do it for us. Look at James chapter 4 and 7. He is not going to do it for us. You see what religion has done? Religion has gotten you so away from your authority that we even see it as a humble thing to say stuff like, I ain't got no power. I can't do nothing. We can wait on the Lord. You stretch your hands out. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We trust you. And we do trust you. But we trust that you've done what you said. We trust that you've already healed us. We trust you've already delivered us. And we trust that we do have the authority to flip the switch. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The word resist means to fight against, to withstand. When you resist something, it, it means you, you're, you're actively in a fight against. You're actively fighting the devil. Now, what ha what's, the, what's the major fight you'll have with the devil? Are you talking about him, you know, materializing and you punching him out? No, it's between these two ears. That's where the fight is going to be. The devil says you're going to die. Now, do you sit there and keep your power shut? You open your mouth and you say, no, that's not what Jesus said. I am already healed and, and in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. Now, get out of my thought life. Then he comes back the next minute. No, that ain't how that is either. He said, whenever I have a need, there is a supply. Get out of my thought life. See, it's just what he did when Jesus demonstrated how to have a fight with the devil in the book of Matthew. He, the devil came and said something to Jesus. He responded, how? It is written. He came back and said something else to Jesus. He responded, how? It is written. And then after a while, he said, get. That's what you do. Spiritual warfare is you maintaining the victory that Jesus died to obtain. It's maintaining what he, he, he's already done through his blood. But you know what we do? We sit there and let him wear our mind out and don't open our mouth and say nothing. Remember the Bible says cast down every thought that comes up against you? How do you cast thoughts down? With words. You don't cast thoughts down with thoughts. Say this out loud. Well, don't say this out loud. To yourself, I want you to count from one to ten. Ready, go. To yourself. All right, you counting? And I say your name out loud. Now, what happened to your counting? Why did it stop? Because you opened your mouth up, released words, and the thoughts had to stop to submit to the words that you were getting ready to speak.
That's what happens when the devil comes and tells you what the word doesn't say. You open your mouth, cast that thought down, take authority over those negative thoughts and speak what Jesus has already said in his word and resist the devil. Don't just sit there and let the devil tell you, you're going to die. You're going to be broke. You're going to get put out your house. You ain't no good. Who the same kind of no good for nothing man your daddy was. You're going to be the same thing. And you just send up there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You ain't doing nothing. The devil just beating your brains out and it won't be long before those thoughts become something you meditate on and they will build they will construct a house a stronghold will get in there and once the stronghold has been created you now will just line up with the stronghold because you would not resist the devil you can't go to God and say God the devil's on my back get him off my back if you don't get him off your back he's just gonna ride your back like a monkey you gonna just be ridden all the time you the one that's got to open your mouth and get the devil off your back get the devil out your house. Get the devil off your money. Get the devil off your situation. If you don't do it, it ain't gonna happen. You sitting up coming to church because you need God to do something for you. God said, I gave you the power. Flip the switch and do it yourself. Go to the hospital and lay hands on such and so. He says, no, I mean you, you take yourself to the hospital, put some gas in your car and lay hands on them and they will be healed. I am not your errand boy. I am the king of kings sitting on the throne and I have released this authority to you. What you going to do? You remember that song? What you going to do for me? What you going to do for me? See, but we got that other song. We, we sit up here thinking about, you do it, Lord. You do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Please do it. Do it for me right now. Come on, I need to hear it sing one time. Come on. Lord, do it. Lord, do it for me. And the Lord say, I already did everything I'm supposed to do. My job is to supply the power. Your job is to use the power. Don't come up here talking to me about what I need to do. I am seated now. I am resting on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, to see how you do with what I have given you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, but praise the Lord, we're grace people. That sounds like performance. That ain't performance. That's you receiving the favor to command. Amen. You think you earned the favor to command? Now, here's what religion does. Religion get in there and say, yeah, I know you have authority, but you know you ain't been good enough to use it. And that's what you think about before you lay hands on the dead people, before you lay hands on somebody sick, before you speak to your black. You, you, you always think, well, am, am I? Am I deserving? Am I qualified? And so what happens? You keep your mouth closed. You don't walk in your authority. And you suffer. And it's your fault. Now here's the deal. Now this is, this is, this is radical here. The reason why the religion doesn't teach on authority, because it makes us accountable. And we don't want to be responsible for where we are. That's why religion has always taught you to blame the devil. And when you really hurt, blame God. And then if you can't find them to blame, just blame somebody else. But religion says, don't you ever accept responsibility. Now, any leader knows that you can't have authority as a leader without, first of all, accepting responsibility. You can't have authority without responsibility. You can't come in commanding somebody else's kid and you don't take the responsibility to feed them and clothe them and stuff like that. You don't have authority. Where there is no acceptance of responsibility, there you can't have no authority. But when you accept responsibility, then you have authority and it works. But church folks trying to look in the spirit to see why is life like this? Why 
Why am I being treated so bad? How come don't nothing go my way? I don't understand. I done prayed and I prayed, prayed and I prayed. I done prayed all night long, prayed all night long. I done prayed and I prayed. And God said, I done turned the power on. 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 The power on. The power on. The power on. You won't take authority. You won't accept responsibility. You won't accept responsibility for being broke. Not, 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 neither will you, you won't accept responsibility for being broke. And then you can become envious and full of strife against folks who ain't like you. Y'all ain't ready for this. Somebody say, I'm finna, I'm, I'm, I'm finna get out of the school of the supernatural. I, don't, I, I, I ain't know this was gonna be about me. And you, you, you tolerate stuff. You're selfish. And you can't see you selfish because you're looking at yourself through your eyes. It's amazing. You can't see what you see with your own eyes, but when somebody else use their eyes and put it on you, they see all the stuff you can't see. And selfishness is the root for every bitterness and every strife and everything you can have because you're at the center of everything. And you don't have to be. You won't accept responsibility. You mean to tell me I'm the one responsible for the cancer and the stuff I got? Absolutely. Yes! Who else thought it was? The devil? It was you who couldn't leave fried chicken alone. It was you who stressed out all the time and wouldn't walk in peace. It was you that wouldn't cast your burdens on the Lord. It was you who wouldn't take authority over certain things. It was you. It was you that had to have something sweet. I just got my sweet to you. But that don't sound right because it's, it's not spiritual enough. You're supposed to say that was the devil. my part what I played for that cancer to get on my body I let Negroes get on my nerves I didn't know how to rest in the Lord and I tried to do everything and do that and do this and all around and, and you can't do all of that and, and, and expect to live healthy and stuff like that but I know now I know now I ain't written no space in my mind to not now one, you know what I'm talking about. What you call them, what you call them? No beautiful people ain't getting in my mind. No ninjas gonna get in my mind. You belong to the law. I ain't going through that no more. And I took authority. I took authority over that. I got, I knew, I knew nothing was going to happen until I took authority. Blew my mind walking in that doctor's office. Uh, you know, I'm thinking he's going to say, well, everything good, you had a good report. Uh, we have found a, 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 an aggressive form of cancer in your body. And you need to move quickly because it's moving very quickly. And I'm sitting there going, Cause I thought I was already doing everything right. You know, that go to tell you all the pills you take, all the exercises you're doing, you do all of that and don't have a peace of mind and carry weight and stress. The reason why it doesn't work because stress closes your cells up. And when your cells are closed, none of the nutrients and oxygen is getting in the cells to be transported to the necessary places of your body. That's why it's so dangerous. Budgets needing to be met, offices all around us were carrying all that stuff. That wasn't my job to do that in the first place. Man, I got that news and told Taffy, I said, baby, I'm going to disappear for a minute. I'm going to go on the other side of the house and I just need to focus and hear from the Lord. And I got to praying. God said, everybody Jesus healed when he was on the earth, they were not even born again. 
you gonna let people who wasn't even born again get healed and you not get healed? I said, well, Lord, how they get healed and they weren't born again? Jesus commanded it on them. I saw it. For this long, I've been itching to share this, which I saw it. Man, I, I got up out that bed. I sat on that desk. I got my communion and my Bible confessions. And I opened my mouth up and I started speaking to it. How I many know Jesus spoke to an it? I said, cancer and my prostate. I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus. I have been given the authority to speak to you and I command you, get out of my prostate, get out of my body. You are no longer allowed to reside here. Leave now. And I took the bread and I took the cup. Something shook in me. Something happened that night. I knew it. I knew something so supernatural took place that night. So for the comfort of my family, I went through the priest. I wanted the doctors to be able to declare it. And so I went to a friend, he's a friend of mine now, we've come close friend, one of the best in his field. I went and he put me in his MRI machine and gave me things, kept me there an hour and a half. Then I finally got out and it was so crazy because, so one of the technicians says, oh dear God, this poor man has cancer in his uh, spinal cord. That the devil is a lie. <laughs> they were all, oh, I'm like, what are y'all sweet for? No. So I went to Doc. He said, come over here right quick, because he was doing it through video. And he said, come on, I got to show you something. And I went in this room, and they had all these big screens and stuff in the room, right? He says, now, I'm the best in the field. If nobody has told you, I am. I said, boy, you must be just to say it like that, you know. <laughs> Older gentleman, near 70s, he's been doing it for a while. He is. He says, now, I have seen the grade a cancer that they said you had. You know, they take a biopsy, send it to the lab, and they, they put a grade on it. And uh, he says, now, I've seen that before, and it light my screen up. He said, now, let me show you what I'm talking about. He said, I go in and out. I'm going around. I'm going through it. I did some extra stuff. I gave you some dye. He says, I'm going to tell you something. He said, it ain't, no, it ain't in there nowhere. I can't find it. I know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can't find it nowhere. So then he matched paws on his machine. And right when he matched paws, an image of a bearded man appeared on all the screens. Jeremy, am I lying, son? He was sitting out there right there with me. And, and he said, you see that? I said, yeah, I, I see it. And then the doc said, you're talking about that man on the screen? And right then the Holy Ghost said to me, didn't I tell you, you got a man living on the inside of you? So we went back to the urologist and said, look, in fact, he called him in front of us. He just called him back. He said, something ain't right. He says, I can't see it. I don't know where it is. I know you say it's in there, but I don't, listen, I don't went through all through the thing. Ain't nothing in there. I can't. And the doctor said, well, maybe I'll see if they can take it back. You know what them folks did? <laughs> we ain't going to take it back. With that type of grade, we was right, we was right, and we was right. I said, now, ain't that something? So we sat and talked about it. He said, now look, he says, the type of treatment you have, and he said, we, I ain't got to cut nothing. It, it, all, if you just let me do this, I want to go in there and just make double sure, look at stuff, uh, treat that one little area, and, and, and we'll be done. Can I do that just for my sake? And I'm thinking, like, you know, your sake. <laughs> then I asked, is it going to hurt? <laughs> They went ahead and did the treatment. I was off the table, walked back to the, to the room. Later on, you, you do your follow-ups for several weeks. Uh, good, good, good. I mean, I'm a man over 50 years old, and, and my PSA was like a, a one. Anybody know what that is? It's like one. <laughs> and he, he went on. And he, I said, let me ask you something. Did you ever see anything? He said, no. I never saw anything. Let me tell you something. That night, when I took authority and released my authority and did what 
I was graced to do. That was my responsibility. It was not God's. He'd already done his responsibility, supply the power. It was my responsibility. It is your responsibility. It is you who are to take authority and speak to your it's. After that, I just shared this and I'll be through because the faculty are playing today. God bless your soul. Say whatever you want to say about me. The spirit can't even have his way because he's so busy thinking about the Falcons. God bless you. Hallelujah. Say what you want to say. May the Lord keep you and all that other kind of stuff. Love you anyway. But I'm going to be home by one. I'm going to tell you that right now. Let the Spirit of God lead you your way, and I'm going to let the Spirit of God lead me my way. <laughs> but I shared recently how this pain from all of that was in my tailbone. And the Bible says, be careful to not let certain things slip. And I had let the authority of the believer slip. I was back praying to God about something. Oh, God, remove the pain from this tailbone. Oh, Jesus, I'm confessing the word that the pain is off. The I mean to tell you, when I go in the restaurant and see a wooden chair, I'm like, oh, Lord, I can't get that. Bo, lo, lo, bo, show, bo. <laughs> My wife came to me. She says, I went on the Internet. They got these, uh, cause the doctors were saying it, it's cause you aging. I said, I ain't aging. I said, I'm not getting, I'm not aging like that way. I'm, I'm, I'm going the other way. Are you looking? I'm not saying, how old are you? Oh, he's he younger than me. I said, look at you. Look at me. Tell me who aging. I ain't aging. And then, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's what they call age. Ha, ha, ha. What? I ain't old. What you talking about? So my wife said, well, they make these underwear for men and they got pads back there for the bone. And I said, baby, I don't think I can see myself wearing them pads. I mean, that pad might get switched over and I'm wearing my butt on my hip. <laughs> yeah, they kind of sound like the pins. I ain't ready for that. <laughs> so I said, I'm just going to deal with it, you know. And, 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 and I was, uh, I was, uh, 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 give my, my my baby a ride back to school. I had to preach in Savannah the other week, and she she goes to school down there. She wanted to catch a ride. I gave her a ride, and, and uh, while I was while I was in the car, he said, uh, "You have yet to speak to this pain in your tailbone." I said, "No, God, I've been praying to you, and I've been making confessions." I said, how did I let that slip? I got up in that hotel room, closed the door. I said, pain in the tailbone. I said, I'm talking to you. Pain in the tailbone. You don't have a right to be on my tailbone. So in the name of Jesus, I have been authorized by God to cast you out. Now you get off my tailbone, get out right now. <laughs> Hear my hands of God Almighty. It was 15 seconds went by and that pain was gone. And, and I'm, I'm around the room testing on everything. I'm sitting on the couch and all in there, sitting on, I'm like, God, no, it ain't. Praise the Lord. Went and got some porcelain, sat on it. It wasn't there. I'm like, Lord, praise the Lord. I'm praising God for it. And I'm thinking, did you see how fast that was? So I went the next day. It ain't there. I went the next day. Praise God, it ain't there. Sat outside on some concrete. It ain't there. Glory be to God. Now, around the third or fourth day, that pain came back. I said, hey, didn't you hear what I said to you three days ago? In the name of Jesus, you can't stay here. Now you get off. And it went away again. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus spoke to a fig tree. Yes, he did. And he said, no man will eat fruit of thee hereafter, forever. And they didn't see nothing right at the time. The tree still looked exactly like it was. And he went on about his business. 
But in verse 20, Mark 11, he came back in the morning. And the disciples remembered because they heard him. And they saw the fig tree had dried up from his roots. You might not see what you say at that moment. But in the morning, y'all listen to what I'm saying. Just because you don't see it at that point doesn't mean that it didn't work. Honey, the power is always on. And if you'll make use of that power, you will get results. Now leave this place today in the power and the authority of Jesus. You speak to your circumstance. You speak to your lack. You speak to your sick body. You speak to a job. You speak. You have the authority. Use it. Now lift your hands up and thank God for this authority that has been given to you. Praise him for it now. Think about what you're getting ready to change. Think about what's getting ready to happen today. You will no longer tolerate debt. You're not going to tolerate insufficiency. You're not going to tolerate sickness. You're not going to tolerate pain. No, no, no more. No more. No more. The authority is in your hands. The authority is in your hands. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It is up to you in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, praise God and execute it. Things are about to change in your life. I tell you, the devils are outside weeping because they can't believe you got this today. They are afraid of you because they know what's getting ready to happen. Ah, oh, suck it, suck it now. They know what's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. You're going to walk in this authority. You're going to move in this authority. The angels are going to rearrange and change things because it's been waiting on you to operate in this authority. Somebody need to give God some praise up in this place today. Somebody need to give God some praise up in this place today. You have the authority. Now, now you see why this needs to be a series. Now I got to go back and break all of it down. Show you how to believe. Show you how to talk. Show you the devil's M.O. Show you how all of it works. But I needed to get it to you today that you have the authority over every work of the devil. Bow your heads right now. Father, this is it. We will no longer be abused by the devil. And nor will we tolerate things in our lives that you've given us the authority over. That ends today. Lord, we're hungry to live in the supernatural. To walk in the supernatural. And we know, Lord, that if we will give this right response, this unusual response, that heaven will give us the supernatural response. Now speak to us on how to respond with our finances. You know our situation. We have authority over that. Let us use our authority where giving is concerned to change the outlook of our finances. The power is on. Show us what to give today. Your word is clear that when we give, it shall be given unto us. We have the authority to give. That we don't have to tolerate lack. We don't have to tolerate debt. As long as we execute the authority on this side of heaven and in our life to speak words and to sow seeds. The authority of a farmer to grow corn is in the seed that he plants. And he speaks victory and success over the seed that he plants. So likewise today, Lord, teach us. Teach us about this area. Show us that just because it's a physical, financial thing doesn't mean that we don't have any power over it. We do have power over it. We've been given the authority to sow a seed and to reap a harvest. And we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you need an offering envelope, raise your hands. Ushers, get it to them quickly. The quickest way to see your authority is what we're doing right now. The most dangerous thing that lack knows is a seed. The most dangerous thing that debt knows is a seed. And you've been given authority to sow a seed and to reap a harvest. But if you don't execute that authority that's been given, life is what it is for you and you'll end up blaming the devil and it ain't him at all. Sow the seed. Believe God. Trust that he has already prospered you. He has already healed you. He has already delivered you. And begin to celebrate what the blood of Jesus has already done for you. And with great confidence, when you release your authority and release your words, the power is in the words that you speak. Was it Proverbs 18, 21? Death and life is in the power of the word. So your words have power, but if you fail to release those words, you fail to release your power, and then you find yourself walking in the same condition you've been in, blaming somebody who's not responsible. How can anybody be responsible when you've been given the authority to deal with everything that you've been dealing with? I believe today, I'm hopeful today, that you are accepting responsibility and saying, you know what, this is over. This is over. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to sit here and listen to this man show me scripture after scripture and go over this thing and I walk out and put up with the same thing. Oh, this is over with. This is over with. I, I ain't doing this. God be praised. God be praised for what he has done. Lord, help us to never again walk around having the power on and we won't even go in the bedroom and flip the switch. What? So take your authority. Walk out of here today, releasing your words. But what if it come back? Well, if it worked the first time, it'll work again. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Everything's gonna be all right, you hear me? I said everything's gonna be all right. I don't care what it looks like, it's gonna be fine. I agree with you. Whatever you release, you're going to be fine. You're going to be happy. It's time to be happy. It's, it's time to be happy with folks saying, what's going on with you? I'm just happy. Why are you happy? I'm just happy. Why you ain't happy? <laughs> Hold your arms up, listen. So Lord, you know, we release our authority. We sow this seed, and we command this seed to come back a mighty harvest. Hallelujah. You've turned on the power. We make use of that power right now. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, sow that seed in Jesus' name. I'm going to show you in this series that there is a scripture that says where God is speaking, and he said, command ye me. And there are some things that you're going to see in this series that is going to absolutely be amazing. And if you'll, if you'll take the time to come to church and get a hold of what's being taught, you're going to see your life turn around. And things are going to change. And you're going to begin to rejoice and say, wow, it works, it works, it works, it works. Amen. And it's always worked. If you're here today, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to make him your Lord and your personal Savior today. Why die and go to hell when provision has already been made ready? Make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Secondly, if you're here and you've never received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues, when you pray in tongues, you pray about things you don't even know about. What a powerful grace gift to pray in tongues. What authority to speak in another tongue and great things begin to happen and you're, you're trusting a language you don't understand and a God you cannot see and yet things begin to, to blossom in your life. And last but certainly not, certainly not least, if God's called you to join this church here in College Park or the ones that we have around the country and in uh, Canada and all the other places, if, listen, 
if, if you connect, there's something that happens with divine connection. Uh, connect today. Become a part of what I believe God is doing for these last days as he's raising an army of supernatural believers up that we will then begin to demonstrate the power and authority that Jesus has invested in us. Don't keep living the same way you've been living when the power has always been on. At this time, if there's no, you know if you come on down and get your Bibles personal along, I would love to pray for you just for a minute. Get saved today. Re recommit yourself to him today. Whatever you need to do, let's do it today. I'm going to ask the congregation to stand. Turn to your left, right, front, behind, begin to minister to the people near you. And